One of the first questions that I get asked uh, by almost every client is can they fly a drone uh, in the area that they intend to get their photos for the property? Now there are many answers to the question. Um, some are simple, it's a simple yes, we can do that, and uh, others involve a more complex answer. Um, the quickest way to find out whether the airspace allows you to fly there in uh, Perth WA, Western Australia, is to go on to an app called uh, OK to Fly. And I'll just pull it up for you. So OK to Fly is an app. Oh, right. See that green dot just there? There's one there. So OK to Fly. It comes up with a warning and basically it's got your location on there in the blue dot and in the top right you can then select the address so you can put in you could put in say if we put Janicot because we know there's a, uh, there's a number of uh, issues in flying in Janicot you'll see that in Janicot that there is a big area on there that says you can't fly. Sorry about the reflection there, you're getting the reflection from the window. But basically it comes up with a, a map uh, and a dot that shows you whether you can or can't fly there. Now still very grey from there. So basically on that, um, that one's planted it right in the middle of Janicot Airport so obviously you can't do that. Um, and generally speaking uh, in um, arrival or departure paths you can't fly. So whether that's Perth Airport, Janicot Airport or smaller airports generally speaking in those uh, arri ar arrival and departure paths is a no-go. That said there's a area surrounding the airport that's in red and normally that indicates 5.5 uh, kilometres or 3 nautical miles I think of uh, the uh, airport itself. And basically, CASA made some changes fairly recently that allows us to fly drones that are sub 249 grams in that zone. So drones like a Mini 2, Mini 3 with a smaller battery, that sort of thing, you can fly in those areas, and it all, you know, it's it's all it's all fine by them. Uh, I ran CASA on my first one, and they weren't too concerned at all uh, about flying as long as you don't fly over the arrival and departure paths of the airport. So it's, it's, it's a maybe on that, if providing your drone operator or your photographer has a drone that's sub 250 grams, you can fly in those areas, but you're limited to a ceiling height of 45 meters or 150 feet, uh, need to keep the drone within line of sight, and obviously you've got to fly safely. Um, uh, 45 meters does limit you a bit, um, but you can get some very nice shots, um, and I'll see if I can put some, um, Sorry, I'll put some uh, uh, examples about where my finger is there. So it's a maybe. Um, on that same app, there are a number of other orange dots that are around the place. And I'll just zoom in to show you one. Let's say around the around the around the city. So all the orange there is normally representative, uh, representing uh, helipads, uh, what they call danger areas. Uh, could be the further uh, perimeters of smaller airports where there is uh, plane activity. Um, and basically you can fly there, you just need to take precautions. Um, you need to make sure that there's no people around you, you need to make sure that you're not flying within uh, up to 100 or past 120 metres or 400 feet. Um, and make sure that uh, you say you're generally flying safe. Um, uh, that's providing obviously you're launching from uh, a property that you have permission to launch from, which is the other um, issue. So basically speaking, most councils in Perth are okay with you flying a drone there, providing that you're abiding by CASA's regulations. This is as of uh, August uh, 2022. So you can, you can launch a drone, you can take your shots from a, a park or a playground, providing you're not within 30 metres of people, um, do your shots, do your business, and everyone's good. Now there are some councils that aren't uh, drone friendly. 
they might have nominated grounds that they want you to fly from, which in that particular case might not work for you, uh, which you then have to uh, make application for permits to fly your drone or to launch a drone from their property. So, like I say, th there are the straight up and down answer is you know generally speaking, if you're launching from your house or your vendor's house or or, or whichever, you have their permission. Therefore, the council. Um, have no you know say in it uh, providing you're abiding by CASA rules then that's all fine um, it's it's when you're launching from the ca the council ground um, or the public space that it might become an issue but again uh, look on the uh, uh, council's web pages uh, some of the drone forums have those sorts of things mentioned um, and you find, generally speaking, you know there are a lot of councils that are very drone friendly. Uh, they encourage the behaviour and understand that the way forward is to be um, understanding uh, that, that drone operators and photographers um, are the best publicity for the council uh, that exists. We, we go out there, we take marketing shots effectively and post them online, uh, normally free of charge, you know, on some of these social platforms and. It really does sell an area to its 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 highest standard. You know, you get some really amazing shots uh, where we are down in Secret Harbour, Secret Harbour, Rockingham, um, Mandurah, beautiful places to fly a drone. Um, and like I say, some of the best uh, photographers and uh, drone operators live down this way. Um, and it's it's a it's a beauty to take those sort of shots. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, we love doing it. We love being able to. Uh, to um, launch from those spots safely and perform a quick flight, come down safely, change your batteries over and do it all again. And like I say, we'll post that stuff on Facebook, Instagram, um, and uh, give that suburb town centre um, free publicity. Uh, one of the photos, or a handful of the photos I've taken for um, when we were at uh, Waruna Dam, I think one of them's got 100,000 views. Don't tell me that's not good for the uh, for the area and um, uh, you know tourism. The other app that I use frequently is one that's called uh, it's a it's a weather app. Uh, it's called UAV Forecast. UAV Forecast tells me uh, how strong winds are at height. Now, obviously, the next week or so, if you're in Perth, WA, the winds are terrible. So we've got 180 to 100k an hour winds at ground level, so we're not flying drones. Um, and generally speaking, depending on the size of the drone, they've all got their level of resistance to wind. So Mini 2, which I've got, you know, might go up to 25k an hour, of which at 25k an hour, it's okay. Um, if you go up to an Air 2S, it'll have a stronger capability, and a Mavic 2 Pro, stronger capability. Mavic 3, if you're lucky enough, or a Mavic 3 Cine, Again, stronger capability. Um, again, but, but each situation is judged based on um, safety protocols. So whether you think it is safe enough to fly, um, how dense the population is in that area, um, whether there's going to be cars, people, parks around, that sort of stuff. So, sorry, excuse me. You need to um, have a professional make that call. Um, launching a drone in a park with thousands of people around or over a beach or a heavily populated beach is not okay by CASA um, and that's it's poor operation. Uh, some of the photos, you know, there's some amazing photos online that clearly breach these rules but that's up to them and CASA to deal with. Um, as a professional um, drone pilot and uh, photographer um, I won't be flying around a lot of people at any stage, even if it's to get that magic shot. I'd always take myself away from that situation to launch and make that happen. Now, this is the app I was talking about, and it sort of shows you fairly clear. I've got the paid version, and that's just gone off. I've got the paid version, but you see on there, you know, 48 k an hour winds, 90 km an hour gusts. Now, that's not cool. We're not flying now. And down the bottom it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, gives me a seven day forecast, which I've paid for this app, uh, tells me in advance um, what the predictions are. Now, uh, you know, they're 60% accurate. It's not, you know, it changes daily. Sometimes it can say it's raining, it's not raining. Um, but generally speaking, it's fairly accurate and it's worthwhile um, going on those, um, those predictions, especially when you're booking a job a week in advance. But again, I always go back to that app. Keep checking, uh, you know, forecasts. I've got a couple coming up in uh, uh, Perthway, and obviously before I go out that way, I want to make sure the weather's good. 
uh, and it's best for my clients as well. They want a good job. They don't want it, you know, us waiting out storms in order to get the worst shot ever. So we keep an eye on that app and make sure that when we go out, we're getting the best uh, weather for the purpose. We've covered, can I fly there? So then obviously, you know, we know where we can fly. We know what apps to check uh, before we go out there. Of course, if you're one of my clients, just ring me. I'll just, uh, I'll do all that sort of stuff. You don't have to check it. Um, and obviously I know what can be done at what stages. Um, I've covered that I use generally at this stage. I'm gonna, I normally buy a drone a year, but at this stage I've got three drones. A Mavic 2 Pro Air 2S and a uh, Mini 2. Uh, all of which have different purposes. Uh, generally speaking, if I can use the Air 2S, I'll use the Air 2S because I've got a fancy controller that I use for that one that gives me better visual um, brightness, I suppose, on the screen. So it allows me to see that the um, shot that I'm getting is what I want. Um, and again, Mavic 2 Pro is just a trusty workhorse. Uh, and the Mini 2 I'm using for airport zones and areas where um, I want to be a bit more discreet. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's a and with a better lighting situation, I won't use a Mini Two for um, you know um, sunrise, sunset because just the uh, sensor's not big enough to to do that. So I've got those three drones that cover me for all the situations that I need. Now I often get asked uh, if my editing I do a, a little bit different uh, styles with the editing, and again I'll. I'll, uh, I'll put some examples around around here where my finger is. Sorry, guys, I'm not getting the exact point. So, you know, I, I work with a number of agencies and about 60 different agents at this point in time across WA. Uh, and in saying that, I, I, I do anywhere from boutique agencies where they get a handful of listings a year to some of the big guys that are listing and selling 120, 150 properties. Um, and I do, uh, I customise the graphics and the um, labelling to the brand. Um, I generally include somewhere between five and ten shots, um, all at different angles, and I put the points of interest in at the same cost at this point in time. So I'm, I'm I say, I, I do a different job to most. You can look through the internet, you'll come across my photos and go, hey, that's uh, that's one of James's from UFO Drone. That's what he's doing. So that's what I thought. Have a look. You know, I'll put some examples up from different brands and you can see, look, you know, I'm doing things a little bit differently. Look, everyone does drone. Photographers do drone, some agents do their own drone. But UFO drone, no one's doing it quite like us. Now, uh, I'm asked, what are the 10 types of property that is best suited to real estate aerial photography? Now. As the owner and operator of the business, I would say do it for everything. But it's not normally the case. I mean, if you're, um, you know, I've got one of my clients is in Janicot, and uh, so he's in very active airspace. Sometimes he simply can't do it because he's in the approach and departure pathways or, or, or very close to, um, or it's just not going to paint a pretty picture of the house. You want the house to be presented in its best light. Um, often that's up from up high, showing the neighbouring parklands, schools, uh, shops, um, places of attraction to a potential buyer. Now, if it doesn't reflect that, don't have it in. If you've got a neighbour that collects, you know, steel, and their their property has just got steel everywhere and from the air, when we take that shot, we just see a bunch of rubbish, and it paints the house in a poor light. Then maybe it's not the right, you know, uh, type of shot. That said, we can always blur backgrounds and things like that to take the focus off the neighbour and onto the house in question or the property in question. So there are different ways for us to do that. Now, again, I would think the first thing that comes to mind when people say, what shall I use the drone for, is land. Now, 85% of my business is general mum and dad standard residential blocks. So... You know, areas like Bife and Armadale, Kelm's got Silver Grove, uh, Mandurah, uh, Rockingham, those sorts of areas. Pretty much anywhere there's a vacant block, we can make that look amazing. Now, the next lot is rural. So if you've got a 10-acre property and you want to sell it, then there are certain things we can do to 
you know, selling its best light there. I did one up the hill in Martin the other day, and the agent had said, hey, look, can we do something special with the, um, or not, he didn't, he didn't say special, he said, I wanted to point out that there's power that's been put there, and there's also uh, a water tank to a bore. Can we do something with that? And uh, again, I'll put an example just there for where you might uh, see how we've done things a little bit differently. So I basically inlaid um, some photos into some drop pins to say, hey, look, this is where the power is. This is where the water is. Uh, and it says it very simply in that picture. Uh, again, it's a beautiful property. Great example to do that. But um, yeah, that's what we did for them. No extra charge. Like I did that off my own back. Uh, and there might be a charge in the future, but you know, for the most part, if I can help out and that doesn't take me too much time, then I'll, um, I'll, I'll do it off my own back. Again, he didn't ask for that something that I've just, just done and said, hey, look, it's a bit different, but do you like this? And yeah, as far as I know, I've liked it. Um, number three, if it's a premium location, anything on the water, anything near a lake, anything near a prestigious school, uh, something that's going to add instant value. So if you're, if you're near, you know, down, down this way, there's a lot of properties that are near the ocean. A lot of developments near the ocean. It doesn't have to be, you know, if it's within a couple of k's, it's still a, a big plus. It's the reason why a lot of buyers are moving down that way is to be close to the ocean. Uh, a new type of lifestyle, fishing. I mean, I spend, I don't know, too much time if you ask my wife, fishing. Uh, but I love it. I love catching fish and uh, drone fishing just might be around the corner, you never know. But that is why people are moving down there. It's a huge thing. Location is massive. Uh, so if you're near a lovely um, pond or, or walkway or river that, but that they're going to uh, exercise around, get some shots, get some drone shots. Yeah, they can do some drone video. Like, get some uh, footage of those uh, you know, specific locations. Um, again, did one in uh, North Danlup the other day, which we did a drone video for, and we did some video at... Um, uh, some nearby school hall parks that sort of thing just so it really sets the scene when they move there this is the lifestyle they're getting now number four which I've sort of covered with premium location is waterfront if it's directly on the water it goes without saying we can make it look absolutely amazing even maybe do some twilights you know you can make it look absolutely out of this world by getting those shots on the water um, Parkside, same, you know, so, so there are a lot of the um, developments these days are focusing more on the parks because the backyards are so small than they are on, on, on everything else. So the parks go up first and then they promote the parks. I mean, there's some amazing spots in Perth with some amazing parks or um, pump tracks. And that is the highlight to the area because your kids are going to be playing on those park, parks and, and, and you don't have to worry. They're in a local park, um, perhaps often across the road. Um, see how the underup springs to mind, uh, where you've got the pig park. Uh, I don't know what it's called, but there's all these pig stuff that's dotted around. And they've got the estate around this park, which is near a school, near a shop. All looks amazing from the air. And now they're also doing a similar or parks not too far from there, so that everybody's near a park. I know if we had a park around the corner from where we are, it would make uh, life a lot easier, uh, especially with a younger family. So I think that's uh, a big one. So Parkside. Now the next one is development. And in particular with this one, we want overlays. So if there's a retain and build, you can keep the first house and build one on the back. If, you're, if you've got a, um, you know, a plan of that, send it to me. I'll uh, draw, draw it over the top, so you've got the house and the um, subdivision in the back. So that works. You know, you get to sell the benefit of the purpose of the land, which is to divide it into two. Um, or three or four. Or, or knock over the house and do that. Just name it. I can do it. Uh, normally, if there's extra editing charge, there is a small charge involved. But it will make it look amazing and sell it for its best purpose. Which in that particular case is, is the use of the land. If you can get three blocks out of it, that has a value to the buyer. Um, and that's the, the, you know, what you want to target is, is the buyer that has those sort of um, uh, plans. The next one, uh, which 
yeah, so is big, larger developments. So sometimes, again, you know, you can do one with a 10-unit site. We can draw all that in, uh, and it can look amazing. You can sell a development site that way. Um, different angles, again, with lots of drop-ins to where the local amenities are, because that's going to be a feature to the buyer. Um, multiple dwelling scenarios. So it might sound the same as the previous, but it's not. Uh, you might have a 10-acre block with two houses on it, um, and... If you look in REA, that's who most of us uh, advertise through, REA will allow you to put bedrooms and bathrooms, but not state the number, dwell number of dwellings. So you can have a drop pin over here that says main dwelling, and then a drop pin over here that says um, secondary dwelling, or subsidiary dwelling, or, or a second house, or granny flat, or whatever it may be, you can have that noted on your first picture. So anyone that's looking says, hey, look, I can. there's two properties there. There's one over here, there's one over here. That's what I'm buying. That's what the 10 bedrooms is. It's not one house with 10 bedrooms. It's two separate residences with six in one and four in the other. And that makes sense. Uh, it might have a value to them. A lot of people are living with their parents now. With everything that's gone on with COVID, they might be, um, you know, again, just, just uh, living a bit frugally, um, selling a house to perhaps live with in-laws, um, you know, get that built-in babysitter that we're all chasing. Um, you know, just a bit of a change, you know, the, and it tells them straight away that this isn't 10 bedrooms, this is two houses. All right, the next one, standard residential, just normal residential houses. Again, this is most of my business, is anywhere that's, you know, anywhere that's anywhere. I do a lot of business in Armidale, Kelmer Scott, Rolly Stone. Um, I do a lot in Mandurah. I do a lot in, you know, surrounding suburbs of Mandurah. Uh, I do go out to Perth, and the furthest I've gone is um, Hillary's and a little bit north. I don't do it every week, but we do do it. Um, so if you have, uh, if you're an agent and you're looking to, you know, differentiate, differentiate yourself a bit, uh, a little bit of different branding, hit me up. Happy to help out, throw you a free demo of what I do, uh, or show you an example of ones that I've done around your area. Um, the next one, or the last one is yeah, properties where agents want to stand out from the competition. Now, if the one next door has done just a Google overlay, drone photos are going to make you look amazing. Make you look shit hot. You know, make you look like you are the best agent to call around there. Um, again, you know, with all the points of interest and everything, which I generally include in my price, a very low price, then, you know, that they're going to call, they're going to call you. They're going to say, hey, look, this guy does this, but... What's, what's this crap over here? Oh, that's, that's terrible. It just makes them look worse. And I do have an example of that, but I'm not going to um, rag out the agent too much. But there is, uh, you know, I've done one recently where it's two blocks down from the one that's been done by a long, long-standing agent. And, you know, you put them next to each other and one looks like it's being under market and the other one's kicking out of the park. So... I can tell you which one I would be more attracted to as a buyer and a potential vendor. So your potential vendors are looking at that and saying, hey, should I go with this guy or should I go with this person? They're probably going to go with uh, the more professional marketing package. At the very least, you're going to get a call in to explain why you do things the way you do things. Right, that's all that done. Um... People have asked how long I've been flying drones for. Now, I think my first one was a DJI Spark, and I think it was about 2018. That was when I was in real estate. For those that don't know, I was in real estate for 12 years, um, and in different companies. Um, and I still do work for, I think, almost all of those companies. Um, so, yeah, I, I've got, I started off then um, just doing drone for my clients uh, that I, you know, I wasn't um, selling it, so to speak. Um, and then I had a, a mate of mine that I was doing some work for and uh, his company said, hey, look, have, have you got insurance? And I said, oh, I don't have, I don't have it at the moment. So I then uh, looked up how much insurance was and coincidentally, it was exactly the amount that I'd earned in uh, the drone so far. So I got the insurance and then I was down to zero. But the things. now I've got a stack of drones, that one's well gone. And, you know, what are we, four or five years later, 
and uh, yeah, we're three years into the company effectively, um, and uh, everything's kicking along nicely. Like I say, dealing with about 60 odd agents at this point, uh, and I hope to add to that this year, um, and it's all going swimmingly. Now, um, yeah, how many shots do I provide? Now again, it's not a straight answer. There are some times that you're restricted. Uh, I did one the other day in, uh, in Perth, and don't get to fly Perth too much because it's one of those areas where they require permits if you're launching from public um, space, council land. So this one I didn't have to, So, but I was sandwiched in by a few main roads. So we can't fly over main roads uh, that are like freeways and that sort of stuff, busy highways. So basically I had to be very careful. Even in that, I think I still delivered 10 shots. Um, it was a great location, so I couldn't not. But I suppose at the least is about five, um, usually between five and 10, more often than not seven, if that makes sense. That covers your all angles. So, you know, top down, uh, obliques either side, some distance shots, you know, if I'm nearby a park, maybe some shots of that park. Um, and normally of those, the agent's gonna use, I don't know, between three and the whole lot and seven. Um, generally they wouldn't use the 10 because they've got a, you know, they've only got 30 odd shots to, to, to put into REA. So that's easy enough. Um, we've covered insurance. Uh, so I am insured now uh, with uh, 20 mil public liability. Uh, so everyone is covered there. So that's probably the only downside. If someone was doing the shots themselves, or perhaps a photographer that just thinks I'll buy a drone and add to the business, you've got to make sure they're registered, the drones are registered, and you're insured. Uh, if you're using it for work purposes, you've got to be insured. Um, if you crash down on someone's head, uh, they take a prop to the face, it's a bad day. Um, you know, everyone's going to, uh, yeah, you're going to be on the news. You don't want that. Um... How long until my photos are delivered and how are they delivered? Right, so my photos, generally speaking, I'll deliver them on the same day I shoot, or within 24 hours. Often within six, normally that night, but definitely within 24 hours. Uh, I deliver them via Dropbox. So I have a Dropbox link I send to you, you download them, um, that's that done. Um, if I make any changes again, I can uh, either attach them to an invoice or Dropbox link, you can re-download them. Um, I take the edits um, very seriously, I do them as quickly as possible. So I understand being an ex-agent that, that you want them yesterday. Um, so if I do the shoot, again, at this point there's weather, there's horrible weather, so we're not shooting. When I get back to shooting, I'll probably have a bank, you know, it might take me 24 hours to get through the editing because I'll have a stack of them that need to be done. Generally speaking, I'll have them done in 24 hours. It depends on how long that line is. But generally, I'll have them done in 24 hours, um, which is, you know, again, aligns with um, an agent's expectations on, on delivery. Uh, I know when I was doing real estate, uh, we had some great drone photographers, uh, but their delivery wasn't great. We, we didn't, uh, we had to wait three or four days sometimes. Um, even video, I'll try and do it in, in a day. It might take two. Video's a lot more um, uh, taxing on time. It might take, you know, four hours to edit a video properly. Uh, but I'll still try and get it to you within that time frame so you can use it for your marketing uh, or put it on a, a coming soon campaign on Facebook or whatever you're doing. Um, who designs the branding? And does the agent need to provide anything? Look, I can source most of the stuff. Uh, I've done up demos for people that you know hadn't provided me anything. That said, if you've got a PNG logo, send it to me. Saves me a time saves me ginning around with your logo or sourcing it from Facebook or your website or whatever uh, and then I can knock it up really quickly give you a demo if you ever want a demo just again send me a message send me an email send me a messenger whatever hop on my Facebook check out what I do um, Facebook is uh, UFO drone one so just check it out see what I do I post all my jobs there you'll see how much um, effort I put into things and how I try and stand out from the competition but generally speaking um, you know all my work is put on there and you can have a look and see if maybe your brand matches you know this one over here and you can compare the two um, and I do all mine it's all done in-house by me so I'm not outsourcing editing I'm not outsourcing 
Um, you know, it's all it's all done in house by UFO drone uh, in Australia. So uh, again, you contact me within reasonable hour, and sometimes you know, so I'll message and say, hey James, you know, it's eight o'clock. Um, can you just make this change in the photo, and I'll have it back to them in ten minutes. You know, don't get that if they're sleeping, um, or if they don't understand uh, what you're trying to say. Uh, again, generally speaking, I've been in real estate a long time. I understand what you want. Um, let me just see my. Don't know if that went out then. My computer just went into a timeout. Um, so yeah, I can I can do as much as I can for you, and as quickly as you can, so that it doesn't affect your campaign, or your vendor doesn't see it. Um, you know, spelling mistakes. You know, they happen. They even happen to me. Um, and again, I don't want you to look bad in the eyes of your vendor. Um, so I'll, I'll fix that as soon as I, I can. If I can do it straight away, I'll do it straight away. If it's by the next morning, it's the next morning before they even see. Um, how much notice do I need? How much notice do I need? Now, where there's weather, I, I need as much notice as possible. So when we've got five days of storms, if you want a job done, let me know as soon as you know. So, hey James, this one's coming up, I've listed it, can we just wait for the bad weather to blow over and then get it done and I'll do it as soon as the weather clears. Again, when it's 50, 80 k an hour winds, we're not flying drones. Uh, we're sitting around making YouTube so that uh, you know when it does come good, we can get those out to you as soon as possible. So, uh, that said, there are times where I'm let, you know, someone might say, look, can you do a job for me and I can have it done, you know, that morning I can, I can then go out, do the shoot, come back, and they've got it that afternoon. So it can happen instantly. Often I'm going into those areas anyway. Uh, I can just add it to my list of jobs to do for the day and, and then get it back to you. And then you can, um, again, seem like you are on the ball to your vendor. Uh, which, again, in that case, provides you with potential referrals down the track. So everything you know that makes you look like you're really on the ball when it's me. I'm on the ball. You're probably on the ball too, but we're both on the ball. Okay. What brands have I worked with? Okay. It's probably, I don't know, I do some of the boutiques. I do, you know, O'Neill's. I do Thrive's. I do um, yeah, some Century 21, some Professionals, guys at O'Neill's, if I didn't mention them already. Um, yeah, some smaller boutique brands. I work with a lot of boutique brands to differentiate themselves. Uh, I've done a couple for Ray White, um, but yeah, generally speaking, um, everyone, you know, you name it, I've done it, um, some of the agency, uh, some at realty stuff, so yeah, again, you name it, um, I've, I've done it, and again, their brand will look just as different as the next one, so um, yeah, again, that works, people, people like that, people like to stand out, and their shots to look different to the next. Generally, I provide the shots in two by three format. The reason why I choose that is because, I don't know if you've seen, but when a photo is put onto REA, if it's put on 16 by nine, uh, they chop the ends off, so you actually lose all this. So you see these ones with watermarks that are sort of cut into. Um, that's because they've put them up in 16 by nine and REA's cropped them in. Um, I, um, I, I could use four by three to bring it in further, but I find that uh, three by two is nicely in the middle. Um, and I also, I, I have my watermark a little bit in from the left. So instead of being right in the corner so it gets cropped, I'll move it in a bit so that when it gets cropped, you can still see your watermark. Okay, so I think about the small things. You know, just like an agent, uh, what separates you from the next guy is a thousand small things. There's not one big difference. Um, it's all the little, little details of, um, again, con concentrating on what you're selling, what you want people to notice. Um, can I put my logo, logo or profile on the drop pins? So I do uh, two different sorts. I do, we can have you know, a plain drop pin if you want. Uh, but there are some agents that I'll put their face in, their, um, you know, their marketing headshot. And I'll put that into the branding, uh, which some like, some don't like it. Um, and others will go for their, their logo. Now, um, most of the time, it's fine. REA don't, don't mind it. But on the occasion, they'll flag it, say that there's uh, two lots of the logo in the 
um, in the uh, picture. If that's the case, again, I can edit it, make it look similar, but without the logo for no extra cost. And again, takes me no time at all. So I can just edit that, send it back to you. But generally speaking, uh, we don't have any problems uh, and everything has been good for a long time. Um, we just try and be different. We just want you to stand out as the agent over the next guy. Um, how many points of interest can I put on? Now, ah, uh, it's a tricky one. I would say, I mean, a photo looks good with a drop pin and maybe three, three others to draw people's eye. I have had people do five and six. It just looks messy. I'd say stick with three each shot. But again, if you're going three one way, three the other, three back this way, three there, you know, that can be 12 points of interest. Most people are happy with that. So, uh, and again, uh, that's part of my standard package. That's not an extra charge. I try and keep that, um, yeah, uh, to, the, to the same price. Might take me a little bit extra time, but if you want, just send me a list of what you want. Otherwise, I'll use Google uh, and overlay and, and, um, and see what your local park, schools, attractions are, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dot them around so that your buyers look at that and go, hey, that's a great place to live. It's right next to the park. It's right next to this school. It's right next to the shops. I'm going to love living here. Again, adding value. Uh, adding value to your buyer um, and, your, and, your, and your potential seller to get more money or multiple offers. Um, how do I know if the boundary line and the dimensions are accurate? All right. I try and source most of my stuff from council websites. Council websites are mostly accurate. Uh, that said, I would recommend for all agents to have uh, disclaimers on their website, um, on the pages that they, you know, the advertising pages that they sell on, um, you know, disclosing that dimensions might not be accurate. I would recommend comparing the boundaries and the dimensions that I put on to the certificate of title to make sure that the dimensions we're representing are as accurate as we can make them. Um, again, council are generally okay, um, but they can be a point or two off. Um, and again, we all make mistakes. I've made the mistake on the occasion where I've been off. Just let me know again, I change it in no time. Try and be as accurate as possible. Um, the boundary marks, I'll generally go to the council websites and I'll flick between the overlay and there, the satellite image and I make it as accurate representation as possible to the boundary line. Uh, I don't guess. Many out there do. Many just draw a line thinking it's a square and it's not. Um, I'll go onto the council web website and I'll make sure that it is as accurate as it can be. Uh, again, if we're making a broad generalization that this is the boundary, which we're kind of doing. Um, we want to make sure that it is as accurate as we can possibly be. Sometimes there's no fence line, like it make, makes it tough. Uh, but I try as best as I can. Um, can you overlay a development plan onto a photo? Yes, yes. I'm using Photoshop, I can overlay that, trace it through, and you can get a very accurate uh, development plan. Sometimes with um, uh, like on an angle, like on a, you know, on a 45. So we can make it look good. Um, and again, it is a small cost for extra units, but I can make it look, um, you know, look proper. I can make it look professional, uh, which is what we're all chasing, to be looked upon the best light by our vendors. Um, do you do internal shots as well? I've been asked a few times, and as much as I'd like to say yes, I'm saying no. I am a professional drone photographer. Uh, I do drone only and drone video. Uh, I've got multiple drones. Um, if I was a photographer, I'd have to have multiple cameras and uh, probably another bank account so my wife doesn't find out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, would, yeah, I don't intend to do um, uh, photography. I do work with a number of um, photographers that refer me their business and I do the same. Um, they are amazing at what they do, and I'd like to think that they think I'm amazing at what I do. Uh, so to keep it simple, I try, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll avoid it. I've, I have tried it before. I'm okay at it, but I don't enjoy it. I love flying drones. I love uh, editing uh, the way I edit, 
and making agents stand out from the pack. Simple as that. And I just don't get to do that enough if I was doing internal photography as well. So that's not to say that down the track I might outsource a photographer to work within the business, uh, but at this stage it is just drone. Um, yeah, do I just do the big franchise brands? No, most of my guys are boutique. Um, I do do the franchise brands, like I say, there's a number of them that I do, uh, and I can make them stand out just as much as the next guy. But a lot of the boutiques uh, hire me because of my attention to detail with their brand. Again, doesn't matter what you are. Rodway's a good example, just to mention Ado's company. Um, you know, th their agents can even personalise little bits of, of his brand to them. So one might go with a, you know, a fuchsia pink and the other might go with a magenta. You know, it's all a little bit different, but that's their brand. They're allowed to do it. Take my hat off to them. I, I like it. Makes them stand out from the rest. Um, what does it cost to design the branding? Nothing. Just give us a call. I'll, I'll knock up a brand uh, design for you, like a template. So look, this is what I'll put, again, there's one I did the other day for Janet. Janet, I hope you don't mind, I'm gonna put you here. So effectively, you can see how she just said, hey look, um, can you do a sh shoot for me? It's coming to market, if, you know, in a bit. Um, I want my branding a bit like this, no problems. Here you go, I'll knock up a template, do you like it? I, in fact, I did two different colors for her. She asked for one in magenta and the other one in, a, uh, in the company colors. I like the company colors. When we did them up, so did she. So we're doing the company colors. So we try and make it as professional as possible uh, for whoever might be looking at it. So again, you know, that helps Janet stand out. She's fairly new to her company there. And that's with uh, Exceed, I think. Exceed Real Estate. I think they've just moved from, well, fairly recently from Moy to Osborne Park, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and yeah, like I say, help, helping to make them stand out. And I love that brand. I, I like what Jonathan's done with, uh, with the brand there. So it's, um, yeah, again, I try and make people stand out as much as they can uh, doing um, what they love. And hopefully I do the same in my brand. Again, I do real estate, agent, aerial photography. Um, I'm not doing drone for, you know, generally by anybody else. I do the occasional developer. So if you're a developer out there and you're building a five-story house and you want to know uh, what views I'll be getting out my toilet window, you know, on each level, then I can help you out there. Just give us a hoy, we'll work out a price. Might be much. Just give you an idea on what views you're going to get at the city when you're, you know, on the throne. So I do do that. I have done some stuff for schools, but again, 99% uh, of my work is with real estate agents. I know what you want. I know uh, how you want to be presented to your vendor. I know that you want it yesterday. Um, let's get it done. All right, is there any questions at all, uh, please send me a message. Um, again, Facebook's the best place to contact me, uh, UFO Drone one through the messenger there. Uh, on my website at uh, ufodrone.com.au, my email at james at ufodrone.com.au um, or send me a text um, 0421-904-469 um, or just give us a call on that same number. Thank you.